So um, for the pelvis, the Trendelenburg bar test is first finding like ilia crest again, the and finding easiest anatomical landmarks. So usually ilia crest L four and five between. You come down, find a PSIS. Usually, what you can do is that you can just observe the like pelvic shift itself. But then you, I usually kind of like to put my thumb on a PSIS, ask the patient to flex the left hip. So bring the left left leg up. So when you do this, you are actually testing for the glute medius on the right side. If the glute medius on the right side is not able to contract, then pelvis is going to shift like this. Okay, because the glute medius is to, to for the abduction, it should have contracted to bring the pelvis in a neutral position. So you're checking for the the pelvic shift. If it goes this, it's going to be a positive. Stay neutral. That's negative. Good. Um, Gillette test. Gillette test is the one actually checking for the motion of the SI joint. You will have the one hand the PSIS, the other hand you can write it to the sacrum. Either you, you can go on the S1 or right at the level of the S2 which is the level of the PSIS. I usually go a little bit higher to try to go S1 or base of the sacrum. This, uh, and then we're going to test it to the right side. Go ahead and bring the uh, hip flexion on the right side. When, you, when the patient does that, this, the PSIS thumb should go down. If it doesn't, so it did go down for this patient, but then if it doesn't go down, or go ahead and bring the knee down, and then here, and then bring the knee up again, it goes up together, then this side is restricted. Or if it goes down, well, go ahead and bring the knee down, or bring the knee up again, and then if this, both of them goes down, then this side of the SI joint is restricted. Okay. Forward flexion test is have the patient in a good posture, the correct posture position. You want to find the iliac crest, and then that's a level L4 and L5. Bring it down to the PSIS. You want a tissue pull down, and then ask the patient to bend forward. And then the side of the PSIS comes up, that's the side that is restricted. The reason behind it is that when you actually have the patient f go forward, flex forward, the sacrum itself usually go up. And then you, when the, if this is restriction, like a restriction right on the SI joint, if the, the thumb goes up, then that means the restriction on this side of the SI joint. That's why we do this uh, for the flexion test. Again, so you're going to find a PSIS tissue pull down, ask the patient to bend forward and the side that it goes up is more the side that restricted. Okay, and then um, next text, since we're doing um, the SI joint, maybe we'll do the um, rest of the SI joint test. Another SI joint test that uh, um, we talk about it is prone glide test. Um, you can compare, that's how you the patient lay on the stomach. The prone glide test is finding in the PSIS P PSIS, and we're going to actually monitor the motion on the leg. So what we're going to do is that we're going to actually compress. If we're compressing on the left side of the PSIS, we're going to just feel the motion. You can see the motion on the left side, and you're also checking with the motion on the right side. Usually, um, you, you should move like a little bit, maybe like quite a bit of motion on the like uh, on the left side maybe one third of it like of the motion on the right side then that's what you're checking if the right side moves more than like one third of the motion on the left side then that means it's restricted on the left uh, right side so they're checking for the opposite side of the SI joint um, restriction sometimes though you can check here and also when you push it, you feel the rigid and tension right on the left side of the SI joint. And this is more direct palpation. You, you can also check direct palpation, palpation, is it moving or not. If you not moving, then there's restriction on the left side also by the direct palpation. Uh, some of the tests for the other tests for the SI joint, uh, let's see, we have a Yeoman's test. Yeoman's test is what you want to do is you're going to place right on the PSIS, you're going to actually bring the knee up, and then you're going to actually feel the motion on the SI joint 
by doing like hyper extension of the hip joint right here. You can also ask the patient if there's a pain or you can just feel the, on the SI joint motion right here. Another test, test is called HIBS test. You're going to find right on the SI joint, you're going to place your hand and you're going to internally rotate the, um, the hip joint. By doing this, you're gapping it. So let me show you uh, on the model. Right here is that. I'm going to place this on the top. So you're actually checking right on the SI joint right here and you are internally rotating the hip joint. By doing that, this pelvis this, this pelvis is gapping it, and a lot of time patients will note the pain, but if there's no gapping, there's a restriction right there. Yeoman's test was actually placing a hand here and bringing this up and just kind of checking for the posterior and anterior motion of the SI joint right here. Um, let's see. There is also a uh, couple other tests that we kind of related to um, for the SI joint and the lower back. The one of them is, let's see, necklace test. Necklace test is bringing the heel to the ipsy side of the buttocks, the glutes. When you do this, you see that how much of the pelvis kind of moves. When you do this, you, con you contract, like stretching some of the muscle in the pelvis that you're actually compressing on the lower back. So when you do this and the patient having more radicular pain pattern, then that means it could be increasing, um, on, increasing the stress on the disc that causing more on uh, like herniated disc, like uh, radicular pain patterns. So that will be a necklace. And then similar to that, it's going to be Eli's test. So it's going to be an opposite side of the glutes. So let's show this. So if this will be the necklace, and this is, it would be Eli's test. Eli's test is a checking for the tension on the front. It could be a hip flexors or lectus um, femoris. So if the hip flexors, let's, for example, like psoas, is tight, then when you do this, the hip tend to go come up because of the tension on the iliopsoas. So when you do this, you're checking for how much movement on the pelvis right here. What's next? Uh, let's see. Then we can do the, uh, let's have the patient lay on the back. Uh, pelvic rock test is what you can do is pelvic rock test is that you can actually compress on, on the both side here. On the right up the ASIS, right here. And it could be just compression over here that are compressed on the joint, on the SI joint, and it will have the pain. Sometimes the pelvic rock test, you can also perform it, patient having laid this side down, and then compressing on this way, and to compress on the SI joint, or if there's any fractures and all that. Go ahead and lay on your back. And then uh, some other tests that we can do, one of them is also for the hip joint, that is the anvil test. Anvil test is just the kind of putting the heels that strike like this. If there's a fracture on the head of the femur or neck of the femur or intertrunkan tract uh, fracture, then when you're doing this, you will transmit the pain all to the hip joint itself. Another hip joint test that you can do is the uh, Faber test. Um, what you can do is that you will bring it up to the knee flexion and then external rotation right here and abduction. And at this test, when you go this, a lot of times I'll stabilize the opposite side of the pelvis and then stretch a little bit. If the patient noted the pain on the anterior hip joint, that's probably um, there's an irritation or inflammation on the anterior hip joint capsule. If sometimes when you do this, patient will also noted the pain on the posterior side and that could be more on the SI joint. 